So what you have here is uh, your magnet there and your wire in uh, clamped in between. So you must remember the wire is not touching the magnet. It's actually clamped. It's suspended between the two poles of the magnet. So what they said was the reading on the top end balance increases by 2.3 gram. So if the in top end balance increases means the magnet is getting heavier. So if the magnet is getting heavier, that means the force on the magnet is downwards. Now, who exerts the force on the magnet? The wire. So, according to Newton's third law, the magnet must push the wire up. So, that's how you, you, you figure out the force. Then, use your left-hand rule. Now, the current is flowing uh, already, they told you, from X to Y. So, use your Fleming's left-hand rule. Current is into the plane of paper. Force is upwards. And then, you will figure out that your P is an end pole because you will notice that using your left hand rule you get the magnetic field this way so when you get the magnetic field this way that means p is an end pole why because the rule is where the field comes out so you notice it's coming out from p and going to the opposite pole so the field is coming out from p means p is an end pole so you must tell them the, uh, starting from the force, right? Because they told you the top end balance reading is uh, increases, so you must say the force on the magnet is downwards. So according to Newton's third law, the force on the wire is upwards. So you must remember to write uh, Newton's third law first. Now only you mention Fleming's left hand rule. So now you'll continue, you'll say, according to Fleming's left hand rule, P is an N pole. According to Fleming's left hand rule, P is an N pole. So for this next part, to find the flux density, right? So remember that you are given the, the mass already. So you can use F equals to BIL to find the B. So the mass must be uh, in gram, they give you 2.3 gram. So you you change it to kg first, then you times 9.81. So that's the force now, which is the weight. Because the force uh, acting on the top end, I mean on the magnet uh, that is shown on the top end balance, actually gram first. Uh, so you just convert to force. So B is what you want to find. Current they gave you as 2.6 ampere and the length is 4.4 centimeters. Don't forget to change it to meters. Uh. So from there, you should be able to get your B. So from mental calculation, you get 0 0.197 Tesla. Uh. So the next part, you replace the direct current with a low frequency AC uh, of 2.6 ampere. Find the variation in the reading of the top end balance. Now, the reason why they use very low frequency is because the current will change very slowly. So therefore, the top end balance reading can catch up and show you the force. If it happens very fast, uh, your top end balance cannot even show you the reading, cannot show you the fluctuation. Uh. Because it's happening too fast. You see that? So therefore, they use low frequency. Meaning to say, you can see the changes. Okay? Now, the thing about RMS value, uh, okay, is actually in the topic of AC. Okay? So, in AC, right, there's this term called RMS value. Now, the RMS value here is given as 2.6 ampere. Now, in a typical AC, right, if you plot the current versus time, is going to fluctuate like this. Now, this is called the peak value I0, okay, and this will be negative I0. Now, to get the RMS, right, there's actually a derivation of it, um, which you don't have to know how to derive, but the definition of RMS value, right, is actually the equivalent value of the steady direct current that could replace this and give you the same average power. That means if, let's say, I was using AC, all right, um, to generate, let's say, heat, uh, let's say in the iron. Uh, so you know you're at home, the iron that you use to iron your clothes uh, is connected to an AC main supply. Now, let's say there's no electrical or power supply for one month, but you have to iron your clothes. You can theoretically cut off the wire, connect to a number of batteries to get uh, replace it with direct voltage and you get the same average power. So the RMS value, like in this case, 2.6 ampere means you can replace with a direct current of 2.6 ampere and you get the exact same power. All right, so that's the meaning of RMS. Lah. So like, for example, if your house is 240 volts RMS, which is uh, what we use in Malaysia, 240 volts RMS, AC, you can replace it with 240 volts DC 
and then you will get the same average power. Alright, so that's the definition which you will learn in AC. But today, we are only going to jump straight to the formula. And the IRMS can be calculated, right, from this formula, I0 over root 2. That means you take the peak value and you divide by root 2, you will get the value of the RMS, which is the equivalent value of the steady direct current that will give you the same power. That means you can replace your AC with a DC value as your RMS value. Then you get the same power. So... Today, we are not interested in the AC part yet because it comes under AC. We are more interested in the top band balance reading. Now, if the RMS value is I0 over root 2, it means to say you can calculate the peak current as root 2 times I RMS. And you notice here they give you the RMS current as 2.6 ampere. So you can find the peak value. Now, why am I interested in the peak current? Because if the current is going to flow through the wire, the highest current would give you the highest top band balance reading because it gives you the highest force. Because F equals to BIL, highest current will give you the highest force. So we want to find the maximum top band balance reading in one direction when it's positive. When it's negative, the top end balance reading will be the same value, but just negative only. That's it. So what is your variation? So let's find the maximum top end balance reading first. So for that, right, we can use a bit of ratio. Because when you use F equals to BIL, your F is MG. You will notice that G is constant. All right. Uh, the external magnetic field is constant because it's a permanent magnet. L is a constant, so basically the mass, which is a top end balance reading, is proportional to the current in the wire. So, you can use this ratio, M2 over M1 equals to I2 over I1, to find out if your current goes up to root 2 times 2.6 ampere. Now, why root 2 times 2.6? Because that's the peak current in your wire now. For this current, root 2 times 2.6 here, what would your top end balance reading be? So how, how do you use a ratio? Remember just now they used 2.6 ampere and you got 2.3 gram? So this is your I1, F1 or M1. And this will be your uh, second one is root 2 times 2.6 ampere. That will be your I2 and you want to find your M2. So when you do the ratio, it's actually quite simple. So your M2 is what you want to find. Oops. The M2 is what you want to find. So it's equals to root 2. Oh, no space. Uh. Wait, uh, let me rub. So, wait, uh, I shift everything up. So M2 equals to I2, which is root 2 times 2.6 over the original current 2.6 times the original M1 2.3. So this can cancel. So you get root 2 times 2.3 gram. So if you calculate, you'll get 3.25 gram. Now, this is in one direction. Or no? But when you reverse the current, wouldn't it show you opposite direction? I mean the top end balance. So if you're getting positive 3.25, you get negative. 3.25. So therefore, what is the total variation? 6.5 gram. That's your answer. Because if you're getting 3.25 positive, and then it fluctuates to negative 3.25, that means your variation, the total difference, is your total variation is 6.5. Now, in this case here, you have this uh, magnetic field again at an angle to the current. So they want you to plot a graph of uh, F versus I. So what equation do we use? It is the equation for a wire uh, experiencing a force and magnetic field. So every time a wire has a magnetic field and experiences a force, this is always the equation. Uh. But then because of the angle, we have to find it 90 degrees, so it's sine, nine, sine, sine theta. Uh. And so we are plotting F versus I. So what you will notice is this you can compare to the straight line equation. Y axis is the F, X axis is the I. Can you see your gradient is BL sine theta and your Y intercept is zero. So the question is, is your B constant? Now they did tell you, uh, keeping the B 
the B here constant, uh, a constant magnetic field. And also they said keep the current, uh, well, current is changing, but theta is constant. Right, so the only thing that's changing is your current. Sorry, current is here. So this is a constant. So if this is a constant, you get a straight line. Yeah. And because y intercept is zero, so you get a straight line through the origin. Okay, so you just draw a straight line through the origin. Okay, it's supposed to be a straight line. Huh? Now, the next part here, they're going to vary the angle theta, but the current is the one that is constant. So don't worry, just write down the same equation. F equals to B I L sine theta. But this time, you're plotting F versus theta. Now, when you plot F versus theta, there's a fa sine function. So sine function, this is a sine graph. Now, remember in the sine graph, right, if you start at 0, your sine 0 is 0, and sine 90 is 1. So basically, it's going to go up to a maximum here. That's it. Okay, that's your sine graph. And because BIL is a constant, so there's the, no effect here. That's all for today's video. If you are interested in more genuine sharing by other geniuses, please subscribe to our channel and don't forget to turn on the notification bell. Ding dong. Also, if you're struggling with one or two past your questions and the March scheme just doesn't seem to help. Genius got you covered. Feel free to let us know what question it is by filling in the Google form linked in the description below. Genius Hub will get genius teachers to fulfill your request for the solution. Genie, we'll see you next time. Bye bye.